Alrighty, some people have asked me about my mobile setup in my truck. I have a Ram 1500, it's a 2017, I think. And you wouldn't know that this is actually ham radio enabled, except for that little discrete thing right there. You might also notice on the back that I have a couple of connectors that, well, one of them looks pretty normal, which is uh, like a, a trailer hookup, right? And then there is this SO239 bulkhead connector. Well, this is really not a trailer hookup connector, and I know some people might uh, ridicule me for having, uh, doing a non-standard thing with a standard connector, but I really don't care because uh, this is kind of how I'm uh, doing my setup. So I have two different configurations for antennas. And the first antenna, well, actually I would call this the second antenna. I have a receptacle hitch mount, which I'll show you in a minute, that I will able, I'll be able to put a tar heel antenna on and then can connect the coax and the antenna controller into that port right there. But it makes for a clean setup because, uh, and I also have a cover for this, I don't have it on there right now because uh, it's gonna be hard to take off with one hand. But my normal configuration is just having an ATAS 120 antenna here. I'm able to pop open one of my RAM boxes and this is the, uh, the tar heel. So I'll just move that over and I'll just pick one of my backup or regular ATAS 120s. Pop it out. And let's screw this baby on with one hand done it before and it's no big deal all right so now I am a ham radio visible vehicle now right <laughs> I know that kind of looks crooked but in the picture it's not so let's take a look at the um, the radio configuration I've got the back seat out right now because I'm doing some maintenance and um, just doing some rewiring and cleaning up here I still have some cleanup to do over here but Essentially what I have is my FT891 base station radio or my mobile base right here. And then I have my FT90, FT90R super micro mini. Look how small that thing is uh, sitting right there. Um, I've got just kind of like a little, little whippy antenna that I use for uh, generic community. I don't even really go on two meters or 440 hardly, but this is the configuration I have. So right now I have the antenna plugged in here for the ATAS 120. And this is the coax that runs all the way in through the base of here and into the back that comes out of that bulkhead connector there. So if I want to use the tar heel, I just have to come in here, undo this dude and pop this in here. I'm considering putting a coax switch down here, but I'm starting to run out of room in this back, sp back space underneath this back seat because there's only so much room underneath the back seat. So that's what the back looks like. That's what the actual radios look like. Um, I'm, I'm running a uh, some dedicated 12 volt back here with a special relay switch back here that I can control from the front. And let's uh, go see what that looks like. But once I have the back seat in there, you really don't know any of that stuff even exists, right? So the back seat will be in, that will be underneath and behind the back seat. And I still have access to this little flip up cubby hole, which just has a bunch of crap in it right now because I'm in the process of doing some updates here. So let's go into the front. And as you will see, doesn't look like, <clears throat> doesn't look like there's anything going on really, right? And there really kind of isn't until you pop open the center console. You take out my control heads. I have a external speaker here. I just kind of like plop up there. Um, I've, I've got to figure out a good way to mount this or put it somewhere because that's, that's the only thing. And then of course I got my CW key. I can pop out and put out here and then I've got you know a microphone 
for the one radio, I got a microphone for the other radio, and I also have for the, uh, the antenna controller, the uh, Tar Heel, it plugs into this dude right here. And all of this stuff is actually terminated into this panel. I wound up 3D printing this panel and bought a bunch of different connectors just to mate everything properly. So if I really wanted to get all this stuff out of here, I could just unplug it all and I get this stuff out of here and I could just take this whole mess of wires out of here and I've got, I've got no problems. So um, that's, that's what that looks like. I'm able to really deploy this pretty quickly. I ended up running some switches down here. That's the first one. And that turns on uh, all the stuff here. Let's see. We got that guy. Oh, and um, I have to plug in the head because I wound up unplugging it. Duh. And there we go. All right, so that's what that looks like. I've got some kind of repeater on here. And it looks like this is not booting up. Let's try that again. There we go. Much better. So yeah, um, that's what it looks like. And this is... Uh, the operating console, this operating station, and um, yeah, it's it really works well. I do have discreetly hidden on the side here. I've got two USB cables that come from the FT891 in the back, so I could do FT8 up here also. This one is for the cat cable, the actual USB cable that does go into the FT891. And this is the cable that comes from my digi rig, which you might have seen in another video that I've got a digi rig connected to my 891. And this provides the, the sound part. So I'm pretty enabled there. I can pretty much do whatever I want from a ham radio perspective, except for DMR or Yezu YSF or D Star or any of the other junk that I don't really mess around with too much. So that's basically what that looks like, and that's my standard operating configuration. I could pop that antenna on in about seven, eight seconds, and then launch everything out of that center console pretty darn quick, as you saw, and get lit up and running pretty fast. Now, the other piece is this bad boy. And sometimes, you know, I'll do parks on the air or something like that, and I've been experimenting with trying to, um, you know, just, just do better from an antenna standpoint. And I have to say that this ATAS has been pretty awesome. But um, I want to buy this Tar Heel, and pardon me for a moment. I want to buy a Tar Heel. So I wound up having this um, hitch receiver hitch mount made for me to be able to, you know, kind of play around with the Tar Heel. I've got um, this coax connects right into here, like so. Oops, let me do one more of these rungs. There we go. Coax goes right in like so. So the coax is hooked up. And then I also have, you know, a ground strap going from the hitch to here. And I've got, I've got stainless steel wing nuts that go right into this piece here. Um, just for this demonstration, I'm, I'm not sliding it all the way in, but I would normally slide it all the way in. And then this, this is one of those little dog bone locking mechanisms to be able to lock this thing into place. So you'd see that. And I did it this way because I wanted to also have the ability, and this is where the tar heel goes, which we'll, we'll go grab that right now. And the box of antennas. Get the tar heel out. So yeah, just pop this tar heel on like so. It's a quick disconnect. Push down really hard and twist. So now the tar heel is in, in place. 
And I've, I wound up wiring up, I wound up taking one of these connectors that's really a connector from the, uh, like a trailer type of thing. And I hardwired it in to the tar heel itself. So it goes right in there. I've got a little bit of a choke here and some people might ridicule me for that because it's really generally inadequate. But I just go like this. Pop that dude in there. And I am now, with, with the exception of this, I would you know, obviously connect that in. I'm ready to go from a Tar Heel standpoint. I still have to put the stainless steel whip on, which is also in here. It's right up there. Got it like, got it snuck up underneath in there. It's got a nice little tray that it lays in. Um, but I'm not gonna just throw that on right now. You'll also notice that there's supposed to be a shunt coil between the radiating element and ground. I have tried so many ways and so many configurations to get that shunt coil in place, but the SWR goes absolutely nuts. I get RF all on my vehicle, and um, I noticed that I do fantastic without it. Not sure why, but I do. And this is one of those things where you just have to like kind of experiment and practice and test different things out to see what works. But as you can see, um, I wound up getting this, this connector down here. I think it was from um, American Radio Supply. It's super beefy and it's got a uh, 3 8 inch threaded rod that goes to the radiating element from the center conductor of the PL259 SO239. And I also went to a McMaster car and got some insulating um, like insulated disc here. So it actually isolates the radiating element from the ground, which is cool. One of the other things I wanted to say was I kept this like so because I also have a telescoping mast. And if I want to do parks on the air or do something a little bit, um, you know, more non-mobile, I can um, put, this is a, I think this is a three inch uh, square tube. I could put my collapsible mast in there. It can go all the way down. It's fully supported and it can go up. I think I have a, gosh, it's actually in this ram box here. Ram box. Um, actually, I must have took it out for some reason. Or maybe it's on the other side. Um, but yeah, I have a uh, collapsible mast that I could stick in here and then I can you know, put you know, a dipole on it. I can put inverted V with some wires or whatever. But now that this configuration is in place, all I have to do is just switch the coax back here and I'm ready to rock and roll. So nothing, uh, nothing super complicated. I'm trying to keep things simple. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what life is looking like. So here's the coax. I'd pull that out and put this in. Like I said, I'm thinking about doing maybe a coax switch so I can just reach underneath the seat when the seat's in here and switch between the two. We'll see what happens. But I, also have, I gotta clean up all the rest of this stuff here. I'm kind of waiting for a nicer day to do it because it's kind of uh, a little bit windy and it's pretty chilly outside today. It's like 42. So that's what my uh, mobile config looks like. Sorry for the messy truck. I didn't clean it for all of you folks, but um, you know maybe I'll uh, I'll get it uh, cleaned up for Dayton. I plan on being in Dayton, so if anyone wants to see the setup, I'll have it. It's really not that exciting and cool, so I don't expect anyone to say, "Hey, I want to see your setup." But um, that's what it looks like. And takedown is just as easy as putting things back up. So I got that the little cover back on. I got to put the cover back on there. Um, I just kind of push down really hard and then pop this up. And we'll put this guy back in the ram box. Sorry if I'm making everybody dizzy. <clears throat> and then what I'll do is I would normally undo that ground strap and then pop out the dog bone locking mechanism and yank this baby out. And then we'll just pop it back in the back here. And we'll be ready for another day. 
So that's the mobile setup. Um, and we're back to being relatively clean. Some people ask me what that thing is on the side of my truck. And uh, some people say, oh, is that like a camera or something? And uh, sometimes I say, yeah, it is. So, and then this stuff here, all I have to do is just take this, 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 and this, and whip it back in. This is my, um, this is my new mount that I custom made, 3D printed, that'll, uh, that contain both the radio heads. Um, Got my little call sign on the back, you know, whoop de doo But I, I make I make these on Etsy, so if you're interested in something like that, look me up on Etsy. This is what they normally look like for the FT891. It's just a cylinder that fits in your cup holder here, and I threw my call sign on the back. And I also add a stainless steel screw. I think it's an M5 for mounting the FT891. That's kind of what it looks like. And then uh, I, I got my custom one that I've got my FT90 in there also. So yeah, that's uh, any questions, let me know. Um, like I said, there are some things that I have done or I am doing that are generally unorthodox. And I think one of them also is this uh, this mount. It doesn't really have, it doesn't have a ground strap. I know people like to strap the um, this this part to ground. I don't have that, and I also don't have the um, the coil on the um, the tar heel. One thing I did do that did nothing but help me on with noise is I ground strapped everything. They say to do both hinges. I only did one, and it's been awesome. I just basically have a. Um, uh, what do you call it? An eyelet here and some braid. And that's like a four inch, I think. So I did all four doors. I did the hood to the chassis. I did the bed to the chassis. I did the cab to the chassis. I still have to do the gate to the chassis, but then I also did the exhaust to the chassis. And notice I said chassis, there's like there's like two big rails that go all, all the way front and forward. Everything is grounded to that to make a about as much of a surface as humanly possible. Oh, and if you're like, think that I should blur out my license plate, I really don't give a crap. Come find me, I'll, uh, I'll show you my setup. But anyways, that's what that looks like. Again, any questions, let me know. Um, I did not ground the engine. I didn't ground strap the engine. Didn't know how I was gonna do that. I was uh, thinking about different ways to do that. Couldn't figure it out. I ended up abandoning that idea. And yeah, like I said, I don't think I, uh, I was going to, no. I was going to ground strap this right in here somewhere, but didn't get a chance. I will probably do that some other time. But right now, it's rocking. All right, CW fans, I know this was a mobile uh, installation video, but I uh, appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions, uh, obviously, you know, throw them in the comments. And if you want to uh, flame me or something and uh, slap me around, that's cool too. I'll, uh, I'll pin those. See you later.